No more than 1% to 2% at the most of anyone, Christians and non-Christians, can ever define love. I think it's stupid. I really I think it's dumb. Like people think they're so smart. Probably none of you here, none of you young people could even define love. But here's the problem. Almost every one of you will say, it's the greatest motivation in your life. I did it because I loved him. I loved her. I loved him. You know how dumb that is? If you can't define it. Young man, how do you know you're loving someone if you can't define love? That's right, if you can't. Young lady, how do you know you're being loved if you can't define love? You can't. Young lady, how do you know you have a loving marriage, a loving relationship, if you can't define love? You can't. Let me show you how your generation isn't that very smart. Let me show you. A lot of you guys think you're such a bunch of such studs. Well, you're not. You're not. You're not. Let me show you why. If you're a Christian, do you know what research shows? 37% of all of you who are born a Christian will say, love makes it right. If you truly love someone, it makes sex right. These are born again church kids will say, if you truly love someone, it makes it right. Do you know how dumb that is? No, no, think of this. You can't even define love. So how do you know it's making it right? You can't. Man, that's how dumb it is. Well, if you love someone, it makes it right, and you can't even define love. That's a meaningless statement. It's an excuse to be a meaningless moron. It is. Now, I want to define love for you as a father. You know why? Because so many of you are going to be so hurt and used and abused all in the name of love and have nothing to do with it. Let me take, let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. I'm going to talk, call you nine girls the fabulous nine, okay? I'm going to call you the fabulous nine. The rest of you can eat drop. Now, you fabulous nine, here's the problem. Among the nine of you, there's probably seven different definitions of love. You see the problem? I can almost guarantee you no one's ever defined love for you. Let me do something here. What I'm going to do here is probably the most pathetic thing in the body of Christ. And it's not your fault. It's adults' fault. And it's pathetic. Let me ask you a question. Now, if you raise your hand, I might ask you what the, the definition is. How many of you here have had your parents or your mom or your dad not talk about love? 1 Corinthians 13 isn't love. That shows what love does, not what love is. How many of you here have literally had your mom or dad define love for you. About five of you. Shh. Let's go a step further. How many of you, with all the churches you go to, have ever had your pastor stand at the pulpit, not talk about love, not give a sermon on love? How many of you, now if you raise your hand, I just might now ask you, what's the definition? How many of you have had your pastor right from the pulpit not talk about love, literally define it for you? Young people, that's a tragedy. You are at such a disadvantage, and it's not your fault. You fabulous nine. Now the rest of you listening, you, you guys listen. You fabulous nine. You want to be loved. Girls, there's nothing wrong with that. God made you that way. Look, every guy in this room, every guy who thinks, he usually isn't, but thinks he's macho, <laughs> wants to be loved. If I walked into your average church group, and right off the bat I said, how many of you believe the Bible teaches sex is sinful? Average youth group, Pentecostal, Baptist, whatever, 80% of the kids will raise their hand. Second, I say, how many of you believe the Bible teaches sex is dirty? 40% raised their hand. I said, you're both wrong. 
There's not one single verse in the Bible from Genesis through the maps. I used to think they were inspired. But from Genesis through Revelation, there's not one single verse that even hints that sex is sinful. You say, what? Yeah, you know the problem? This happened to you. It's happened to your parents. It probably happened to your grandparents. I was in a parent seminar, and it was three hours on how to teach your kids about sex. Very simple, young people, when you have kids. Start young, straightforward, biblically based, out of a relationship, and you will win. You will win. Making love to each other. Oh, get real. You're just getting it off. And most guys could get it off with any girl, so girls, don't go thinking you're so special. All in the name of love. And you grow up feeling hurt and used and abused in the name of love, and it affects you the rest of your life. So I want to define love for you as a father. I didn't come up with a definition. I'm not that smart. The Apostle Paul, in fact, he isn't that smart. The Holy Spirit did. I want to give you a definition of love, and I'm going to bring it down so simple that you will never forget it the rest of your life. If you've got at least one brain between your ears, you won't forget it. Half a brain, you won't forget it. I'm going to bring it down to three-word definition. I always said you could never do that. No major concept or less than seven words to define it. I'm going to define love in three words. Now, the only place where I know love is defined, the Bible. I'm not saying there's not other places, but my search engine has never found it. The only place in the Bible where I know love is defined, now get this, of all places... And is in the book of Ephesians. What? Yeah. By the Apostle Paul. Now he says this. Listen carefully. Put it up there. He said, so husbands ought also to love their own wives. Whoa. As their own bodies. I wonder how many of you even had that thought before. It says I'm to love my wife. Not the way I love God. Not the way I love others. It says I'm to love my wife as I love my own body. Whoa. That sounds like Matthew. Remember? They were trying to catch Jesus. And they said, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? Remember what Jesus said? No, wait a minute. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then Jesus backed them into the corner. Remember when he said, and you're to love your neighbor? How? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Isn't that sinful? Isn't it wrong to love yourself? No, wait a minute. How many of you here have literally had your parents, your mom or dad, not only teach you to love yourself, but how to love yourself? you got to be kidding. How many of you have had your pastor, whatever church you go to, right in the pulpit, not only teach you to love yourself, but literally right from the pulpit, teach you how to love yourself. Oh, men and women, that's a tragedy, and it's not your fault. Now think of this. The whole foundation of marriage, the whole foundation of relationships, to love your wife as you love your own body, love your neighbors, you love yourself, and nobody even teaches you to do that, and how? No wonder you're defeated, so many are. As my little daughter said, your marriage will have problems. In the church, in the church, do you know now, this is hard for me to say publicly, right now in the most evangelical fundamental churches, divorce among Christians is equal to atheists and agnostics right now. Isn't that sad? You know why? You know why? I know why. Number one reason. Number one reason. Not the only. Number one reason is this, girls. The man, not the woman, the man doesn't know how to love himself. Right. And therefore, he doesn't know how to love his spouse, and he doesn't know how to love his own children. And many of you are hurting because of that. Don't ever marry someone who does not love himself. You, marriage, will be a disaster. Now, what does it mean? I didn't know what it meant. Love your wife as you love your own body. Love your neighbor. I didn't know what that meant. 